by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine, by the grace of Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Ladies and brothers and viewers of Madin Channel, Alhamdulillah, you are watching Rise and Shine. We begin our program each and every single day by listening to the beautiful verses of the glorious Quran. Let's listen to the Quran. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahi al-Rahman Muhammad viewers of Madani channel, viewers of Raz and Shine, Alhamdulillah, we have listened, we have begun by listening to the verses 
of the Holy Quran, the verses of the glorious Quran. And each and every single day after listening to the Quran, we move to the Naat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa ala alihi wasallam. But before that, Alhamdulillah, each and every single day, we also have a reminder. We have a daily hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam along with a short explanation. Moreover, my dear some brothers and viewers, we have our final segment. Today we shall be listening to the nutritional benefit of one particular fruit. But what this fruit is, you must stick with us to understand and to hear what it is. But before that, let's move on to the naat of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sulti hiki mahshar me shirful ki rasai Oh, God. 
समाई है सरकार कर मैं तुझ में समाई है और तैबा न सगी अफज जय मक्का बड़ा दे तैबाना सगी तैबा न सगी में ये शक क्या था मतला में ये शक क्या था MashaAllah, today again we have Amar Bay back with us. It seems like you know we can't get enough of him. MashaAllah. As usual, we begin by viewing a picture, Amar Bay. We're not going to forget it today. I know this is true in front of us. You know, in front of us, in front of you, in front of me. I am very tempted. You see, Amar Bay, there was also some. There was also some biscuit, yeah, um, but I've already finished them. I didn't get my breakfast today, I was a little bit hungry. My niece and brothers have used Abu Nishalam. Today also we have a new topic, we have listened to the Qur'an, we have listened to the Naat of the Prophet Wasallam. What will today's topic be? Um, Amar Bhai, would you like to introduce us? Well, in Inshallah, today we'll be discussing kind treatment with relatives. You know, when we, Salatul uh, Arham or Sila Rahmi as we call it, being kind towards your relatives. So what does it actually mean? What is the true meaning of kindness towards your relatives, inshallah? We'll try to explore that definition. a bit more, inshallah. It's a very important topic. It's something which to a certain extent should be common sense. If we look at, you know, look at the way that our religion teaches us, uh, just generally good behavior towards all those around us, and you know, respecting the elderly, uh, showing love to the younger ones, and so on and so forth. So these are some of the fundamental teachings of our of our religion. So automatically, when all the other Muslim brothers and sisters around us, in particular, if we're meant to be good to all of them in general, you know, so then you can see particularly those who are closer to you in terms of relationship, they definitely deserve uh, even more respect and more kindness, and so on and so forth. So. This is the fundamental uh, point that the closer the relationship of a person is, the more respect 
and kindness you need to show towards them. And this is what it comes down to when you say good character towards your, uh, towards your relatives. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, mentioned and commanded, commanded us And so in, in this verse we're commanded therefore give the relatives relative his right and to the needy and to the traveler and this is better for those who seek the pleasure of Allah and it is they who are successful. Sayyidi Mufti Ahmad Arkhan Naimi Rahimahullah Ta'ala He says that this verse it is commanding us to fulfill the rights of all relatives and okay. this is something it has become obvious that relatives do have a right and it includes when we say the, the right of a relative in this ayah it includes all of the relatives and it's also been uh, learned from this verse that we should give we should not only treat give uh, treat our relatives with kindness and give them sadaqa just to show off rather it is uh, or, or as part of our custom or you know like traditionally in our family people okay you know my uncle my father was good to my uncle and i've been on good terms with my cousins and so on and so forth so it's just it's just a practice uh, a tradition or it's just you know to show off that this person is a very kind person towards his relatives. This is not the reason for why we should show kindness. It is for the pleasure of Allah. It is for the sake of Allah. At another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has mentioned, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Fear Allah in whose name you claim your rights from one another and be mindful of your blood relations. Indeed, Allah is always seeing you. So from here as well, we learn just like, you know, uh, it's a necessity to fulfill acts like fasting, zakah, saum, just like those are, are an obligation and a necessity, they're necessary. Likewise, it is necessary to fulfill the rights of the relatives as well. That's how important the issue of the rights of relatives is. I think is. Amar, just it being mentioned in the Quran. Yes, definitely. Alhamdulillah, this is the beauty of the Quran. It really is, it truly is, it's the beauty of the Quran that it has showed us the peak of respect, honor, the peak of civilization itself. And it is such, my dear brothers and viewers, that it's for the entire creation, it's for the entire creation, meaning all the man and the jinn, you can say. And it's something that, as we say, never goes out of day. It will always, always has, and always shall remain, my dear son, brothers and viewers, extremely an integral, you know, relevant, you can say. Always shall remain relevant, always was relevant. And this is the beauty of it, in that nowadays, Amar Bhai, do you know before, for example, I went to, I went to Pakistan, I mean, you, you, you yourself also went to your own village, didn't you, recently? And you would have seen that when you went to your village, Tell me how many people came to meet you? How many came to see you? Uh, I don't know the exact number, but I did have, uh, Alhamdulillah, I think, and, you know, generally. And, and, and from those, were the majority of them, the village from within the village themselves, rather than just your um, relatives, one is the relatives, and one is your neighbors included, and you know, everybody around the area. But because this is how it is, whenever we go, and this is from the I've seen, is that it's as if the entire villagers come. And especially in my village, the majority of them are not my relatives, yet so many people came. And the reason for that is because of, you know, the interaction that we have, that cooperation we have, and, you know, we're regularly asking about each other, etc. But even this is dying out there. More importantly here, Amar Bhai, when we come here, that's fine, our relatives come, but sometimes they come because they probably think they have to come. Or if you don't come, then what are people going to say? It's exactly what he is, isn't it? And it's more about, there's too much greed for money. This is another problem. And that is, nowadays, there's so much of a greed for money that we place money before our, you know, the care of our relatives and their importance. And then, you know, some people say, you don't do business 
with a relative or a cousin or a family member. Why? Because then it causes problems. And what's the reason for this? Although it shouldn't. Why? Because that's, that person is my brother, is my cousin. You know, this should be before the money. So why is it that money causes problems between them? Because the relationship is secondary hmm. to money now. This is how it's become, isn't it? That's the reason why, okay, something happens, sometimes a misunderstanding. Let's say relationship, re relationships break up. This is, you know, this is like what, what I've sort of mentioned already that when we help even or assist our relative, we should not be doing it either to show off uh, or to get a good name or just to, you know, even to be able to say to him later, oh, I did you this favor and to express that favor later on. Rather, it is purely for the pleasure and the sake of Allah. And if we can keep that fundamental point in mind, that it is for the pleasure and the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a general treatment of all relatives. Good treatment towards all relatives. And then like I've said, because there are different stages, parents, they're the, they're the ones who deserve the most kindness and they're the ones that, who are worthy of uh, our good character the most. And then after that come those who are uh, the maharim, those for, so for those who is, you know, it is impossible for you to get married in the light of Islam forever. It is haram for you to get married to them because they're your, they're your mahram. And then your other relatives come. So this is the order that we go. But if we look at it, for example, in even in terms of good character where we show it, if, if you look at the, the order I mentioned, parents, then the close relatives like, you know, your maharim and then your other relatives. Usually what happens is, maybe I'm on good terms with my cousins and so on and so forth. So, um, they, they, they'll see good character from me, or at least you know, they'll see a smile and so on and so forth. But within my own house, my own siblings probably be dying to see a smile from me or that good character from me. My own parents are waiting for that good character from me, but they don't get that same character. Not only relatives, people outside, they see my good character, but not my own relatives. The ones who, who deserve it the most are the ones who we deprive the most. Because once again, we, like you said, we started basing uh, relationships more on uh, on a very materialistic basis so and so person he can assist me so i've got to make sure i'm i'm on good terms with him and i've got to make sure that i i, I remain i show him good character and I smile at him when i'm speaking to him and so on and so forth but you've got to keep in mind just like this person that you're you're being kind towards just like he can assist you in the world likewise your kindness towards your close relatives your parents will assist you in the hereafter and that, that, is, that is one thing that we forget. The fact that if I am kind towards my parents or my close relatives, who is ultimately benefiting? Who is ultimately benefiting? It isn't that, for example, the society outside is benefiting. It isn't that uh, even, for example, me showing kindness towards my parents is not going to increase them in their wealth, is not going to increase them in, in how much they eat or whatever. But rather, it is going to increase them in their in that peace of mind and that tranquility in their heart so and that happiness in their in heart and well. it's going to increase you in your ranks for showing that kindness and so who is truly benefiting is you when you act upon the teachings of Islam when you're showing kindness towards your relatives or parents at the end of the day it is you who is, who is benefiting the most and this benefit you will see in the world when your parents pray for you, you that impact you will see. And a lot of the people Allah. who are religious and who are successful, they attribute that success to their parents. And they will mention that, you know, it is the dua of my father or my mother that has brought me to this stage. And indeed, that is their firm belief. It isn't, they're not, they're not just saying that, you know, just lip service. They actually believe that. And then there's the other aspect. This is in the world and then in the hereafter as well, inshallah, we will benefit. On the other hand, when somebody does want to break relationships with their with the, with their with his relatives what is the what what does islam teach us even when somebody takes an oath and takes a qasam to break relationships with relatives islam commands us the ahadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam command us to in that case break that oath pay its compensation but Continue with uh, uh, your good character towards your relatives. SubhanAllah. There's a beautiful incident in Abbasin Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Allah, 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 I think I know what you're going to say, Marbay. Allah. It's about a secret. 
it's not a bad secret now okay then unless, maybe I don't unless know. like when i mention you think no it was a bad secret you just didn't know it was a bad secret go on so sina baka siddiq radiyallahu an he would provide for his maternal cousin maternal cousin meaning his cousin from his mother's side in simple words so for his maternal cousin sina mistah sina mistah radiyallahu an uh, he was a poor companion of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he 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 was one of those people who had migrated so he had taken part in the migration he had take, also taken part in the battle of badr so he was one of the uh, high high status companions from this perspective that he has migrated those companions are praised those that have participated in the battle of badr they are also praised so sina bakr siddiq radiyallahu an he would provide for him because uh, sina mistah radiyallahu an was poor So what happened though is Sidna Mistah radiyallahu an he caused great pain to Sidna Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an when he took the side and he favored those people who had ma'ad Allah laid false allegations on against the daughter the blessed daughter of Sidna Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiq radiyallahu anha who accused her falsely when he favored them Sidna Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an greatly upset by this Uh, he took an oath that he will not provide for him any longer so he took took an oath at that point that he will discontinue providing for his maternal cousin now because you know obviously this incident had uh, greatly upset him so then an ayah in the quran was revealed and swear not those among you who are possess- possessors of excellence and of worldly means to give to the kinsmen and to the needy and to the immigrants in the way of allah and they should forgive and overlook do you not like that allah may forgive you and allah is forgiving merciful so you know it is uh, it is commanded that do not take such oaths right and so the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he recited this verse in abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an he says that i wish allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives me and i would never discontinue providing for mistah so allah. he radiyallahu an then resumed and continued his Uh, you know providing for sina mistah radiyallahu an just after listening to this verse of the glorious quran this was the obedience of sina bakr siddiq radiyallahu an but this is also this is something for us to keep in mind that even if we have to go to an extent where we have to humiliate ourselves you know we have to lower ourselves we have to be the one that in in reality you will be the bigger man as we say but in the eyes of the other person maybe you're lowering yourself in order to ask for forgiveness but the, the, keep in mind the promise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that man tawada alillah rafa'ahu allah whomsoever humbles himself lowers himself for the sake of allah allah elevates him allah raises him and so in uh, when we look at the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well there's a companion who uh, who, who asked uh, uh, Sina Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sina Malik radiyallahu anhu he says that ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what do you say about this matter that when i go to my paternal cousin to ask him for something he doesn't give give me anything and he doesn't treat me kindly and politely as well but whenever he needs anything he comes and asks me for it allah so i ask him and he doesn't give me anything he doesn't treat me with kindness now whenever he needs anything he he asks comes and asks me So what I've done is I have taken an oath I've taken a qasam I've taken an oath that I'm not going to give him anything and I'm not going to treat him kindly as well so I've taken an oath now now he's seeking guidance from the court of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that I've done this now what do you say what's your advice so the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that do that which is better and obviously because you're not fulfilling your oath anymore so you will have to pay your compensation for that oath but explaining this Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi rahimahullah ta'ala he says that in this case it doesn't mean that if he you know him breaking his oath right now is not a sin for him rather fulfilling that oath is a sin because the it is a unanimous agreement of the uh, scholars of the ummah that treatment good treatment towards relatives is wajib is necessary so out of these right now a bigger sin is to discontinue good treatment towards your relatives So therefore now you break this oath and in this case not breaking the oath would be sin and in the, because obviously when you take an oath in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you have now disrespected in that sense the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's why you have to pay compensation for it right. but th- th- this is the essence of it now this is the severity 
this is how much the you know, good treatment towards your relatives, how much, how emphasized it is that even if you've taken an oath to not be good towards them, you're commanded to break that oath, break the oath. but not discontinue goodness towards them. SubhanAllah, I was just eating away all that time, Omar, by Bashallah. I was enjoying it, I was just eating and was listening to you. Uh, my dear brothers, we generally begin with a picture, Omar. But Omar, I was just thinking, you know, me being the host and you being the guest. Yes, I've fulfilled my duty by cutting the fruit, but I've, you've not had any fruit because you've been <laughs> so busy speaking, talking. Yeah. So I'll let you begin. You know, have an apple. Apples are good. Apple a day will keep a doctor away. Um, also, you can start on the mango if you wish to uh, get some sticky fingers, yeah, like I do. How? Uh, let's take a look at today's picture. It's been a little delayed. Let's have a look at today's picture, my dear brothers and viewers. Let's see what you think. Amar Bhai, you don't need to speak. You can just use the eyes and look at this picture. In fact, something else has come to mind also. Um, firstly, what do, you, what do you think about the picture? Don't give the answer away. Not so difficult, it no. seems. Quite, quite a simple one. Now, Amar Bhai, I'll let you enjoy the apple. I'm very <laughs> simplistic in these things. I'll do it when you tell me to. <laughs> no, no, Jazakallah khair. But I bless you. You can continue eating the apple. Uh, but these are the views do not generally, Amar Bay. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was a true rahmat for the entire creation. Really, he was. The, like I think we've spoken about before as well, the society that uh, the Prophet sallallahu was growing up in in the community. The, the, it was total opposite to what we find in the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu And this is something obviously because he is the 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 uh, the most perfect creation of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and he was truly uh, given this uh, by Allah subhanahu wa taala. This mercy was placed in his heart by Allah subhanahu wa taala. And another, you know, mentioned likewise. What do we find in the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in general, which also relates to uh, relatives? Uh, in general, we find the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says that give to those who deprive you, and mend relations with those. Who break off ties with you? Allah, Allah. Make up relationships with those who are trying to break off relationships with you, and forgive those who oppress you. And you know, from the narrations we've already heard, we can one thing that we can gather: the true meaning and the true understanding of kind uh, kindness towards your, uh, your relatives is not just okay. I'm he's kind to me, so I'm kind to him. He attends. He attended. Uh, my daughter's wedding, so I'm going to attend that. But he didn't, so I'm not going to. That's not kind treatment, that's just an exchange of treatment. That's just you exchanging, he did this, so I've got to do this back for him. That's not going out of your way to be kind. And this is where we, we misunderstood the true meaning of kind, uh, kindness towards your relatives. Because we think, well, if somebody is kind to us, we'll be kind to them. If somebody attends our uh, celebrations, we go and attend their times of happiness and their celebrations. But this is not the message and this is not the understanding of the word given from, from an Islamic point of view. So, we, Allah, 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 Allah. And more on this topic, inshallah, very soon. Very some brothers and viewers, as you are aware, we are watching Rise and Shine, Alhamdulillah. Yes, we are watching. We also have a screen in front of us, mashallah. Marba is looking at himself speaking. Um, do have a fruit segment before that let's go to our daily reminder sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam my dear slime brothers today's piece of advice is Regarding the zikr of Allah, try to spend your day and night in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many benefits of being involved in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, there are signs of lust and destruction for those who do not do the zikr of Allah. And this just does not just occur with human beings, but even animals when they are not involved in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they get captured. And in regards to this, there is a very interesting story. Sina Junaid Baghdadi Rahmatullah was given a bird as a gift and he put that bird in a cage and he kept that bird. After keeping for a while, Sina Junaid Baghdadi Rahmatullah let the bird go free. People said, Hazur, why did you let the bird go free? 
Sina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi replied, He said, the bird played with me. Oh Junaid, sorrow you receive joy with your friends, but you keep me locked up in this cage. And now keep me away from my friends, greeting my friends. Hazrat Sina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi says that I felt sympathy for it. And I let the bird go free. Whilst the bird was flying away, it said, birds or animals, as long as they are uttering the praise of Allah Azawajal, they are free. When they get careless, they get caught. Oh Junaid, I was careless of the remembrance of Allah Azawajal just for a short time and look at his punishment that I got locked up in this cage. Imagine what would happen to all the people that are mostly are negligent of the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Oh Junaid, I promise sincerely before you that I shall never again be negligent of the remembrance of Allah Azawajal. Saying this, that bird flew away. And he's mentioned that that bird would come to do the ziyara, would come to see Sayyidina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi and would pick the seed from the food mat of Sayyidina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi When Sayyidina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi passed away, that bird also fell onto the ground shaking and went cold dead. After the death of Sayyidina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi someone saw Sayyidina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi in his dream and asked, how was Allah Jewel treated you? Sayyidina Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi replied, because I had mercy on that bird, Allah also had mercy on me. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mahdi Islam is, great pieces of advice can be taken from this little waqiyah. That birds, even animals, when they are away from the remembrance of Allah, they get caught. And if you just imagine, and just think today, we as humans, the best of the creations of Allah as humans, we are away from His remembrance, who has given us so much bounties, who has blessed us with so many blessings, and yet we are away from His remembrance. Today, when someone goes into a difficulty, into a problem, he moves even away, more away from the remembrance of Allah My dear son, brothers, if we want our difficulties, our problems to be removed, then we should come closer, more closer to the remembrance of Allah And inshaAllah, not only we will save ourselves from the difficulties of this dunya, but also inshaAllah, we will save ourselves from the difficulty of the afterlife. Keep yourself busy in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to spend your days and your nights in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you are at home, whether you are at work, spend your time in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshaAllah, the more time which we spend in remember, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more this will benefit us. The pious people, rahimahullah, they would consider and value that time they would consider each and every moment of their time valuable. When they would have to eat, they would feel sad that in this time we cannot remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are busy in eating. So my dear Islam with us, we have so much time with us. Try to spend your time in the remembrance of the Creator, the Almighty Allah Azawajal. May Allah Azawajal give us the ability to remember Him as much as we can. Ameen bijahin labil ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, the reminder for today is Zikrullah. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, each and every single day. We also listen to a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And along with a short explanation for this, as usual, we have our respected Maulana Abdullah Madani Sahib. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Let's listen to which hadith he has for us today. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, inshaAllah azawajal, in today's daily hadith, we will hear of a few beautiful traits that we also implement in our daily lives, inshaAllah ta'ala. Sayyidina Mu'az ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said that have taqwa, fear Allah azawajal, wherever you may be and follow up a bad deed with a good deed which will wipe out the former bad deed and behave well towards the people. So in this hadith, three things have been mentioned. 
Firstly, taqwa. Taqwa, which means to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect oneself from the severe punishment of Allah ta'ala. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who also defines taqwa as fearing Allah, adhering to his commandments, being content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed one with and getting ready for the day of judgment. So taqwa is one of the most comprehensive aspects of Islam one could say. The second piece of advice given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is to follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Yani if one unfortunately ends up committing a sin, then he should immediately perform tawbah, he should repent and then revert to good deeds. And then subhanallah, the third piece of advice from the most well-natured individual ever, none other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is to behave well towards the people by coming across to them with a good code of conduct and not harming them in any way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to ponder over this beautiful hadith and implement it in our lives so that we too can attain the blessings of both worlds. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. By the grace of Allah by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. MashaAllah, that was our Maulana Abdullah Madani Sahib, one of the first, in fact, the second year graduates, MashaAllah, of Jamiat al Madina, Bradford. And for those of you that may not be aware, Alhamdulillah, Azzawajal, our Jamiat al Madina or Jamiat throughout the country, Alhamdulillah, Islamic scholarly universities in which, mashallah, many things, many subjects are taught, religious based Islamic teachings where people become scholars of the religion, of the deen, they learn, they learn Arabic grammar, language, etc. Along with that, how to recite, understand the Quran and also the Ahadith of Rasulullah as well as other topics surrounding these the admissions are already open if I remember correctly so you can either join online you can enroll online or you can take an application form fill it in and then inshallah for those individuals males and females mashallah we have one uh, for females in Bradford and one in Birmingham we have nine other jamiat in Blackburn in Luton uh, Bradford, Birmingham, Leicester, I think one is in, Rochdale too, mashallah. So in these places, those who live in these cities or even the surrounding cities, they can join our Jamiat al Madina uh, for 16 ages, 16 plus, please do join, inshallah. Undoubtedly, it is extremely important to learn about the deen, learn about your religion, and also uh, scholarly courses, mashallah. It's a scholarly course, isn't it? So you can learn more than what we generally hear about. You know, there's, there's one where you go to a class. This is, mashallah, you can become a scholar of religion, inshallah, So please do join our Jamaat al Madina. Please enroll. Contact number also available for the Jamaat al Madina. Otherwise, get in touch with your local Islamic brothers, Dal Islam, Islamic brothers, inshallah, they shall guide you. Our last and final segment, Amar, by today is food. And nobody's eaten a banana as of yet. I think I'll be the first to do that, possibly. I'm waiting for you to do it, then I'll do it. Okay, subhanAllah. I'll, I'll offer you a banana, Amar, but here you go. You can have a banana. Let's see which fruit we shall be speaking about today. No, it's not a banana. Let's see what it is. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Cherries, what are they? Cherries which have the scientific name Prunus avium are one of the most romantic fruits. They are eaten all around the world and are often a favorite flavor or used as an ingredient in cooking. Predominantly a fruit of cold countries, cherries look and taste wonderful. The cherries are a nutrient-dense fruit that is low in calories and comes in both sweet and tart flavors. Cherries provide a wide range of rich nutrients that include potassium, calcium, 
fiber, and vitamin C. The fruit also contains magnesium, iron, zinc, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and vitamin E and vitamin B6. Cherries help with cancer prevention. They reduce inflammation, protect your heart, and improve memory, and even help improve sleep and even help improve sleep quality. The health benefits of these gorgeous fruits are anti-aging properties they have, they boost immunity, they may even help prevent cancer. It has been said that in terms of eye care, the antioxidants in cherries can play a powerful role in maintaining healthy eyes. They can protect eyes against damage done by free radicals and aging such as vision loss macular degeneration and even dryness. They also help in soothing the eyes, reduce inflammation and maintaining a proper ocular pressure. They help in improving the brain function, they aid in digestion and they reduce heart diseases. It has been stated that cherries also contain a high amount of melatonin or a hormone that helps to regulate the sleep cycle and is released from the pineal gland in the brain. It has been said that tart cherry juice can possibly improve sleep in older adults that experience insomnia. So my dear Simon brothers consume many cherries. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Cherries are my bai You should have had some Brilliant, you should have had some When was the last time you've had some? Cherries, wow Cherries, I don't know Berries like, you know, blueberries, strawberries we Have them more often Like cherries, personally it's not something I eat I don't know It's something I used to have a lot It's been a very long time since I've had a cherry and cherries, macular generation for those that may not be aware or may not have understood what it means is macular just means the retina so meaning the degeneration of the retina the retina again weaker basically getting weaker the, the retina yes the retina is something which is in your eye you can say and part of the eye and that becoming weaker macular degeneration um, so basically your eyes becoming weaker so I should have a lot of those um, also any other individual, they're also good for anti-aging, good for cancer. You see, Amar Bhai, you know, they said that there's a cure for all illnesses. You know, and these are within, mashallah, our foods. And the majority of time, fruits are always beneficial, unless somebody has a, you know, diabetes, where sometimes they may not be. You know, the sugars within these are natural sugars, so the good sugars. But if somebody's sugar levels have got to such a point where it's dangerous and even these uh, become detrimental for their health, generally you should consume as much fruit as possible. These are natural sugars. Natural sugars are generally brilliant, mashallah. My dear brothers and viewers, it is fruit day. Uh, just to give the importance of eating fruit. Coming back to our topic, Amar Bhai, since you don't eat cherries, so I don't think there is anything for you to comment on cherries. No, I, I should oh, try them, that's a common, I guess. I should start eating them, possibly. You have obviously eaten them. So oh, no, I have eaten, eaten them, them, yeah. But it was like a very long time ago, I can't even remember when. So do you even remember the taste of it? Mm, sort of. So was it a sweet or a tarty taste, as we mentioned? It, it does have taste. that to it, but it's, yeah. sometimes it's a combination of both. And, and do you like them? Not for most my favorite fruits. Right. But... Brilliant way of saying something here. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. So, subhanAllah. Ladies and brothers and viewers of Manjala, alhamdulillah, he is little. Razan Shani, you are watching. You can also watch this via Facebook. You can also watch it via YouTube. We did have a picture of the day. Uh, we can have another look at this picture, inshallah, before we do continue on our topic. We don't have, we've got about 10 minutes left, inshallah, Marbai. Um, today, in fact, let's just deal with the picture now. What do you think of today's picture? What do you think it represents now? It doesn't seem very difficult, but no, if I you could that... try to pull out a thousand words, you know, no problem. <laughs> a thousand words? I'm going to have to read all of those books that are there. Read a couple of books. Uh, so I think, yeah, the, the, the message it's trying to give, nurturing and growing your mind, growing your intellect. 
I mean, your mind is going to, you know, you're What's increasing. What's the difference between the mind and the brain? I wasn't really speaking of, about it from a, like, meaning to say that the different, I don't know if you have a difference in mind. In well, mind? Do I have a difference in mind? In your brain. Oh, in my brain? Allah. <laughs> so, uh, but I think the, the, the basic message is that uh, good growth of mind comes from good knowledge and reading good books. Because I think your intellect, your learning, your experiences are constantly growing. And so is your mindset being shaped. But it, it's being shaped uh, based on what you're exposing yourself to, the environment that you are right. surrounded by. So if you can surround yourself with good company, and this is, good company is not limited to people, but even the books you read, the material that you consume in form of video, audio, whatever, all of that is a form of company. So if you want to better nurture your mind, then it's got to be better and good company around you. Yeah, man, I'll go back to our topic. So Alhamdulillah, we were speaking uh, before we went on to the segments, we were speaking about, you know, it's not an exchange of treatment. Right. This one concept we have to clarify. It's kind treatment towards another person, not in exchange for his kindness, but just because it is a command of Allah and the Prophet And this is another thing with our relationships, is when you're being kind to him, be kind because it is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the command of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa not expecting anything back. Don't give something with expectation of receiving. Just give because it is a command of Allah, because it is a command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This links back, doesn't it, that you know, your relationships, your friendships should be for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah, exactly. So that basically makes everything simple. That, you know, his, not like you mentioned before, what goes around comes around. You didn't say that exact thing, but basically some people not being kind to you, or those who be kind to you, only to them do you reciprocate with kindness. But if your relationship was solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then even if somebody was bad to you, it wouldn't really matter, would it? Because exactly. the re reason you're being kind is not because they were kind to you, but because it is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to be kind to others. So it breaks down everything, it makes it so simple. I mean, yeah, I mean the standard for friendship or kindness, you know, uh, having a love for somebody or having hatred for somebody, the, the, the standard is very simple in Islam. If we complicate it because of our materialistic needs or desires, that's a separate matter. But the standard is that love someone for the sake of Allah. If you have hatred and dislikeness to somebody, it, is for the, it so has to be for the sake, be for of, Allah. the sake of Allah. And this is this, you know, a very simple standard. On the other hand, what happens though, it's easier said than done. When you say, okay, those who are not giving you, those who are depriving you, give to them. Those who are coming, when you invited them to your son's birthday, they didn't come. Now, when they're inviting you, automatically the shaitan takes his chance and says, right, why should I go to the house of so-and-so who doesn't want to come to my house? Why should I attend his son's birthday when he didn't attend my son's birthday? Right. And these are the whispers straight away the shaitan is going to start to uh, try to come up with. Yes, and definitely. and this, is, this is exactly the mentality that we have right now in a majority of the cases where we, we, we just don't want to because they didn't do it. And so this is where it's easier said to say, okay, do it. But when it comes to that point, when we're put in that situation, it's very hard to take the step. But that's where you have to, you have to bring this standard in mind for the sake of Allah. And you have to remove any sort of ego of yours out of the way and go yeah. ahead and do it. And this will actually bring about a, a many benefits. There's one narration I want to mention before we end, inshallah. Hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the nation which has any person who breaks off relations and ties, then uh, that whole nation is not blessed with the mercy of Allah. Allah. The scholars, they say this is the severity of this sin, that a normal sin, it affects the sinner. But this sin is such that the entire nation is deprived of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, 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 subhanahu wa Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really make good from amongst those who do not break ties but rather reconcile between individuals and bring harmony between people. Amar Bhai, if there is somebody out there who wishes to make up with somebody, it's difficult for them, what advice would you give to them? I think firstly we, you know, we've Within discussed that uh, you've got to, if you can remove your own ego out of it and you can lower yourself for the sake of Allah, you can go and ask 
for, for forgiveness from your part and try to reconcile. You if see, that's, that's not happening, hard, that's, the yeah, part. That's, the, that's the difficult part, but that's the part under your control. That's your choice. The next part is when you ask for forgiveness and they don't forgive you, that's out of your hand. Right. But at least do what is in your hand. Do your part. If they're not forgiving you, then they're not acting upon the teachings of Islam. My dear sir, brothers and viewers of Madhuri Shah, Alhamdulillah, you are watching Rise and Shine. MashaAllah, we've had a, a brilliant program, Jazakallah Khaira Amar Bhai, for um, relaying these beautiful messages, this information you have given us. Um, Alhamdulillah, you are Today we spoke about fruit. Please keep in mind, eat fruit regularly. We also had the reminder and the reminder of the day was to do the zikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So keep this in mind throughout the rest of the day that we shall inshallah remain busy in doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For now that's all, just keep this one thing on your mind that you must continue to praise the greatest of mankind sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine By the grace of Allah